welcome to another episode of The Gathering Place. Today we're going to do a little something different. We're going to do what I call, or what is called, pairing. We're going to have an aperitif, which is a drink before dinner, and then we're going to make something that my sister might have coined called ham jam. I'm going to call it ham slam. So we're going to break this video up into three parts. First we're going to make our drink, and then we're going to make the sandwiches, and then we're going to grill them over on the grill. So I want to point out here's 2022. This is my brand spanking new uh, snow globe cardinal pear. And what we've got here is a very easy thing to, to do. Three, two, one. And I'll tell you the ingredients here in a minute. But the drink that we're making, the aperitif, is called an Aperol Spritz. Now you can pronounce it in a lot of different ways, uh, English and Italian. And it's funny about the Italian because they're actually borrowing a word from the French, which is the word aperitif. And they turned it into aperol or aper, a, a perol. And so we're gonna make it all together. And three, two, one, we've got a shaker here. We have a little bit of uh, ice. Start off with that, put it in your glass. About half full ice. Who cares if it falls on the ground? My dog lady. We also have animals here. This is a living home. Uh, the upper, the uh, gathering place. We have lady. Our our dog, and our Bella, our cat. Kind of cool animal. Bella's a van. Fans are females, <clears throat> kind of like a calico. I used to call her calico kitty. And then lady is a uh, merle, which means the absence of color. So anyway, we got our uh, glasses full of ice. Next thing we want to do, three, two, one. So we want to start off with some kind of wine. Technically, it calls for, what kind of wine is that? That we don't like, Susan. Prosecco? Yeah, I don't like Prosecco. If you want to use Prosecco, use Prosecco. All the recipes call for Prosecco, but I'm not a Prosecco user, so I'm not using it. So this happens to be a local, which is Casa Larga Lilac Hill, a medium sweet and light bodied white wine. So first thing I'm gonna do is grab my automatic wine opener, take the bottom of it off. It's got a little cutter on the bottom of it, so you can take it around and remove the coil from the top. Just spin it around, take it off, there you go. Now you take this, stick it right over the center, and watch it like magic pull up the cork. You know, a lot of corks nowadays are not real cork. Cork basically comes from Spain, and I think now they're using uh, synthetic corks because Spain wants to make sure they got enough for their own stuff. So it takes out the cork and spits it back out. Get that out of the way. What did I say we're doing? We're doing three, two, one. Here is your three. One, two, three. Three halves. This is one and a half. So we're going to take three, which is an ounce and a half of your wine. Now for this, we want two. So we want two halves of your apparel your Aperol, which is a bitter orange drink, and it's very refreshing. And then for the last stage, what we want to do, let me get this over here out of the way, what we want to do is, whoops, I got to back up again, I'm making two drinks, I forgot. So let me try that again, I'm going to do another one and a half of wine. I'm going to do one, whoops, I think I need to add another one of these, I'm going to do this, <laughs> yeah, so that's one and a half of those, now we got it right, and we need uh, one of these, so it's three, two, one, I'm making two drinks, so now we got to have one, this is club soda, any kind you want, make your own, put it in here, da da da, -da. you don't want to add anything but some more ice to it. You don't want to shake it up because of the 
soda that's in there and it'll probably fit. So just take out a nice spoon and stir it up. Put your top back on it. So you strain it because you've already, already got ice in it. Put this over here, get this out of the way. Put this one over here too. Put it halfway, halfway. Make sure they're nice and even. Now you can call this a summertime, anytime, that's what I call it. Anytime you want to drink it. It's got a very unique flavor. And uh, last thing you want to do, put a slice of orange in it. For garnish. And there you have an Aperol Spritz. See you later. And we're back. Happy New Year again. What did you think of this April Spritz, Susan? I loved it. You still drinking it I'm over there? I'm still drinking it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make ham slam or ham jam sandwiches. Sandwiches. You know how to spell sandwich? S <laughs> A M M I C H. If you've never had a sandwich, you've just never lived life. Okay, so you have some nice seven grain bread. You need some set, some uh, red currant jelly. This is very difficult and hard to find. If you can't find it, use something else. Like, I don't know, melt some of your nanny's cranberry ice and stick that on there too. Then you need some prepared horseradish. Horseradish really makes this sandwich work. Then you need some, I like to use lacy Swiss cheese. And some ham that we just cooked and cut and trimmed seven layer uh, bread and some nice spring mix okay so here we go first thing we want to do is we want to take some red currant jelly and spread it on one of our pieces of bread across the bottom Nice spread over the bottom. Stick that down. Do the same thing for the other sandwich. Because we're making two, this is what Susan and I are going to have. And put that on here. Put this out of the way. Next, we're going to take a piece of lacy Swiss cheese and fold it put it on to that and we're going to take another one and fold it there's three pieces there if you want to snack on that you can eat that while you're waiting for this sandwich to be built put that one on there next to that we want to put some ham so your nice piece of ham whatever the size you got here and just piece the pieces in there if you like or whole pieces whatever you decide you're going to use let's make sure it's a nice size sandwich you see that ham on the top of there and then next we want to take a little horseradish and put it on top of one piece of your bread spread it on there nice The same thing for the other one. Put this here and Matuche. Oh, I need another piece of cheese. Right, you can cut that in half. I'll cut this one in half. cheese is what's going to hold everything together once it's been melted or uh, spring mix. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Spring mix on top of your ham. Thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. A little spring mix on top of that. Doesn't matter if it gets a little warm because all thing you're going to do is grill the bread 
we happen to have a center grill on our oven or our, our stove. So you can do this in a skillet or if you have a panini press, something like that. That would work really well as you know too. So there we got a little more on this one. Okay. Got our cheese. Are you seeing this really good? Looks good. Okay. Now we just take and flip them over on top. Then we're going to go to the stove and grill them, and I'll see you later. And we're back. To the stove. We have our sandwiches pre-buttered. We have this center uh, grill preheated. Now we're going to set that on there and grill each side. You just put some butter on there on either side of it and you grill each side, flip them over and put them in your plate. Your plate is, I used the rest of the orange, split it in half as a garnish, took a little bit of a cranberry ash, Nanny, Nanny's cranberry ash, put it in the center of that, and Susan wanted a little pumpkin pie that we had left over. I'm having a pecan pie, and then we will have just some chips, call it a day. Happy New Year. So, Susan, you've grilled before on this. I haven't had a lot of experience grilling with this. Mm -hmm. So, how do you know when it's done? Let's well, start looking at it. I would, I would give it a good at least three minutes and then ch keep checking it like that. You want to get that cheese melted. That's good. That's good. It's, uh, it's grilling away. Okay, so what do we do now? Da, 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 da. I can sing a song or not. Let's see, do I know any stories? Okay, how are you feeling about gnomes? I'm going through gnome persecution now because I used to have uh, weeby jeebies with gnomes. I thought elves were Santa Claus's helpers. But apparently, according to J.R.R. Tolkien, elves were long, tall creatures with pointed ears. Sometimes they were taller than men or men or women. And uh, so. They're not necessarily the Keebler Elves. And then I discovered a painting that was put in the Time Life magazine, I'm sure. Oh, that looks good. Let's put that one over. And let's see what this one looks like. Yep. Uh, 1929, my favorite artist, American artist, Norman Rockwell. And a picture of Santa Claus in the center and all these little gnomes around him. And then some people even say that Snow White, she didn't have dwarves in her life. She had gnomes. Dwarves can be little tiny people with many different kinds of species. So anyway, I got a little gnomey. A lot of people think they're freaky because they're just full of hair. But they got stocking caps just like Santa Claus and long white beards. The women, the men do anyway. So, anyway, this we're going to call a ham jam sandwich. And uh, you can cut it in half if you'd like to. And uh, try it. I hope you enjoy it. Try the Aperol Spritz. And maybe in the future we will start to make some drinks that are... Uh, um, Italian flair, French flair, who knows what we'll do, especially next time, who knows what we're going to do. So anyway, Happy New Year, hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time. Oh, wait, wait, one, one more thing, I think we're done, we'll put it into the plate, put some chips in there, handful of chips, any kind of chips you like, make them yourself if you like. We like salt and vinegar chips. And so there you have it. Your, your Happy New Year's dinner. Have a great one. Love you. Bye.